Biomimetic materials, spider silk fibers. Mankind has long imitated nature in scientific and technological advancement, taking inspiration from all aspects of the natural world. Over millions of years of evolution, nature has created some of the most efficient biological systems known to mankind, from the microscale metabolic processes within cells to the macroscale reorientation of plants towards sunlight, and the imitation of natural systems can offer a novel approach to many human designs. The scientific study of biomimicry has led to advancements in materials for medicine, mechanical devices, chemical catalysts, and many more. Silk has been a valuable material for humans for centuries, particularly as a textile, and has facilitated trade throughout history. While silk is most often produced by silk worms, a more elusive type of silk has also interested humans for centuries. Spider silk, the material from which spiders weave their webs. Ancient Greek and Roman soldiers used spider silk for wound dressings, while many other cultures used spider silk for fishing lines. Spider silk is much more difficult to obtain than silkworm silk due to the difficulty in farming spiders, as spiders confined to small spaces will kill each other. In the late 19th century, the French missionary Jacob Paul Combouet attempted to create a spider silk farm in Madagascar, and succeeded to an extent, managing to weave a fabric that was displayed at the Paris Exposition of 1898. However, the project took several years and hundreds of thousands of spiders, making it infeasible particularly as the French were seeking a source of silk that could replace Chinese silkworms. However, spider silk continued to fascinate textile manufacturers and scientists alike. The strength, lightness, and durability of spider silk made it ideal for many applications. Spiders are able to produce up to seven different types of silk using different glands in their bodies, which can be characterized as rigid, for example, the silk that provides structure for spider webs, or soft, for example, the silk found on the inside of spiders' eggs. Each type of silk has different chemical and mechanical properties uniquely suited to their application. Certain silks can stretch to more than twice their original length to catch prey, while other silks barely elongate in order to provide structure to webs. Certain silks retain their adhesive properties, while others become non-adhesive. When it is first made, spider silk is in a liquid form. However, it solidifies while passing through spinnerets, likely because of shear stress applied to the proteins during this process. In some situations, a controlled pH gradient is present in the spider's glands that also contributes to the solidification of a silk strand. While all of the over 48,000 known species of spider produce silk, the most widely studied of these silks belong to the orb weaver spiders of the genera Nephila, Argiope, and Cheirostris. The silk of these spiders is among the strongest biological materials ever studied, having high tensile strength, elasticity, and toughness comparable to some of the most advanced man-made materials. Because of their prevalence in easily accessed locations, these spiders have been used by research groups to investigate the physical, chemical, and biological properties of spider silk. The chemical composition of spider silk and the physical properties of the amino acids that make up the silk was analyzed in depth in the early 1960s by several groups that recognized the potential of spider silks. Spider silk proteins are primarily made up of two amino acids, glycine and alanine, which take up approximately 67% of the amino acid composition of the proteins. The remaining portion is made up mostly of glutamine, serine, leucine, valine, proline, tyrosine, and arginine. As glycine and alanine are hydrophobic amino acids, their high concentration in spider silk helps in the assembly of tertiary protein structures during spider silk dehydration. The other amino acids help support the tertiary structures via hydrogen bonding. Two proteins in the spider silk, known as spidroins 1 and 2, provide the unique structure and properties of silk. These proteins are often thought of as block copolymers due to the repetition of alanine and glycine amino acids 
in certain domains within the proteins. Polyalanine segments of 5 to 10 peptides form beta sheets in the proteins, which then form into crystalline domains within fibers. Glycine-rich regions form helices and beta turns that assemble into amorphous regions. This combination of crystalline and amorphous regions in the silk fibers contributes to the toughness and strength of spider silk fibers, with the amorphous regions providing elasticity and the crystalline regions providing tensile strength. The spider silk fiber often contains small amounts of non-protein components, such as carbohydrates or vitamins, that help support its function or stability. For example, dipotassium phosphate has been found in spider silk and makes it acidic, which in turn makes it resistant to bacterial growth that would weaken the proteins. The genetic sequence of spider silk proteins was decoded in the early 1990s, providing a more in-depth look into the specific composition of spider silks. The genetics of silk proteins are a topic of research to this day, with more and more silk proteins from many species being sequenced every year in order to better understand how the diversity in protein composition and tertiary structure of silk contributes to its distinctive properties. By isolating the genetic sequence of spider silk, researchers could insert the genes into other organisms, which could make it possible to isolate large amounts of spider silk more easily than before. While using purely chemical methods to synthesize spider silk is possible, the complexity of the structure and the highly controlled environment required to achieve proper folding makes biological synthesis much more feasible. The first attempts to make synthetic spider silk focused on transfecting bacteria, such as E. coli, with spider silk genes, as bacteria were easy to transfect and culture. However, concurrent research showed that E. coli could not provide the required environment to form the structures in spider silk. Further attempts focused on transfecting larger organisms, in particular goats and silkworms, which offered the benefit of easier silk harvesting and the conditions for proper conformational assembly of silk proteins. While silk is still expensive to produce, technological developments have brought the price of spider silk down from tens of thousands of dollars per pound to less than 200. The mechanical properties of spider silk would make it ideal for applications that require lightweight yet strong and resilient material, such as bulletproof vests, sails and parachutes, and ropes, among other things. Spider silk has an elastic modulus only slightly lower than that of many industrial metals and a similar tensile strength, but with a density 16% that of steel, silk is a stronger material by weight. In addition, the structure of spider silk, crystalline regions within an amorphous matrix, is the same as that of many polymers used to absorb shock, such as Kevlar and Nomex. The toughness of spider silk, however, is more than twice as high as that of Kevlar, while the density is almost identical, and spider silk becomes more tough with decreasing temperature, while polymers such as Kevlar become less tough. In contrast to Kevlar, spider silks also do not have to be synthesized in volatile or acidic conditions, making spider silk a promising material for many mechanical applications. The biodegradability, low toxicity, and elasticity of spider silk would make it ideal for medical applications such as scaffolding for tissue engineering, antibacterial gauze, or drug delivery methods. Due to spider silk being primarily composed of proteins, it would not leach any toxic compounds, and would integrate well with the body. If necessary, it could also be easily removed from the body after use without extra intervention. The structure provided by spider silk would serve well both on the micro scale and macro scale to organize or encapsulate molecules, cells, and biological markers and ensure their targeted delivery to intended locations in the body. Spider silk could also be integrated non-covalently with small molecules to broaden its range of functionality. Spider silk has thermal and hydro-responsive properties that make it potentially suitable 
for specialized applications such as air dehumidification or thermally conductive materials. As it is hydrophobic, spider silk accumulates water in beads on its surface, which are very easy to remove. Because this does not require energy, spider silk could become an effective method for dehumidification or water reclamation on both small and large scales. Spider silk has also been shown to have high thermal conductivity, which can be precisely tuned by elongation or protein composition and used for thermal energy dissipation or transfer. On the nanoscale, mimicking parts of the structure of silk could allow for the creation of simpler yet effective materials that would not be as difficult to synthesize but could provide some of the mechanical or biological benefits of spider silk. For example, the alanine-rich domains in silk could be used to provide structure to nanoscale biological arrays for use in drug delivery or biosensors. While the use of spider silk is currently limited mostly to research, future advancements in understanding and manufacturing spider silk could bring about drastic changes in industry and technology. Thank you for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like or subscribe for more educational documentaries. Check out more videos on the channel, or check out my friends' channels for more content.